everybody's talking about cloud computing and they consider the future of IT. But hey, personally speaking, I don't consider it the future, I consider it the present. So let me ask you a question. Why do you even have to worry about cloud computing? I'm gonna define cloud computing, but just let me give you this example so that you understand why we actually need it. If you're running your own business, and let me just imagine any kind of business, we're not talking here about IT, let's just say that you have a store, for example, anything that you're selling here. Do you need to worry about the product that you are selling to grow your business, or do you need to worry about the supporting functions, the business supporting functions? What are those business supporting functions? Maybe for example, the electricity that you need in order to just light up the store, the power supply, the power supply or the water that is you know, being used over there. So you don't have to worry about generating electri electricity by yourself. You don't have to worry about the water that is being used over there. It's the responsibility of the, let's say, the municipality. Okay, so you're only renting those services from the professionals who actually worry more about their job, who worry more about these functions and the supporting functions for your business. Bottom line is, if you just focus mainly on your own business, you're going to get more time to generate more income in order to grow in the area where you want to grow. Same thing same analogy is gonna work with computing and IT resources. Oh, what do you mean? Well, how about if I told you that, let the computer professionals worry about computing and you can focus on your own business and your own industry, whatever that business is. So, okay, well, you caught my attention here. So what is cloud computing in a nutshell? I'm gonna just define it from the NIST perspective, what is that? The National Institute of Standards and Technology. What did they say? Well, here's your definition, <laughs> you can read it over here. They define it as a model of enabling ubiquitous, convenient, on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources. Okay, what well, are the, those resources? The resources are, for example, uh, networks, servers, storage, applications, services, name it. There are anything that can count as in information technology resources that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. Okay, well, that's very promising. So you need anything that is related to IT infrastructure to be created, owned, and controlled and monitored and operated by the IT professional, by the service providers. And you, Mr. Customer, you will only focus on your business. Okay, well, well that's good. This is going to lead, this is going to lead you to just automate the, uh, the, the, the computing resources, the computer resu computing resources is going to be more resilient. You're going to save costs. You don't have to worry about employing IT professionals, uh, finding those geeks who are going to be running the IT infrastructure for you. This is definitely going to be cost saving for you. Security is also going to be handled by those service provider that know more about the IT infrastructure, and it's going to be flexible to grow or shrink those resources as you go. Well, if that's the case, so you want to tell me exactly how cloud computing is going to work. Like, what are the characteristics of cloud computing? There are five major characteristics, I would say, that make up a cloud, that make up cloud computing. First of all, you need to have some kind of measured resources. Those measured resources are actually the IT infrastructure resources, as, is, as we said in the previous slide. These are the computing resources, networking resources, storage resources, any piece of equipment that make your IT infrastructure. We're talking general here about IT because networking is part of the IT infrastructure. This pool has to be rapidly expandable. It could be elastic, it can be elastic, it has to be elastic. What do you mean not elastic? You need to expand it or shrink it as you go. So you don't need to be bound by the hardware that you have bought because you're not gonna buy the hardware, you can actually rent it from those service providers. I keep repeating, broad network access. You don't wanna be limited by specific geographical location where you can access the network from specific areas. You can 
you need to be able to access your equipment, your IT infrastructure equipment from anywhere in the world, no matter how big your business expands. And that has to be on demand, sole service. What do you mean, on demand, sole service? Those services that you want to use and utilize, they can actually be demanded automatically, expanded automatically, shrunk automatically without having to worry about getting those IT professionals and onboarding them. You need to just be able to deal with the infrastructure automatically without having to worry about the details of how this infrastructure actually works works and in the end you want to be able to measure those services that you're utilizing because hey end of the day you are paying for these services you're renting that's the right word you're renting those services from the service provider okay so you want to be able to measure exactly your consumption so that when you when the service provider bills you you know exactly how much you have used out of those it resources that have been rented and those computer resources that have been rented to you, Mr. Customer. So examples, well, there are different examples. You can access those resources, those cloud computing resources anywhere in the world using any kind of network equipment or any kind of computer equipment. So maybe you're trying to use, uh, let's say, for example, uh, here is my pen. Let me just grab my pen over here. You're using any kind of uh, device or maybe you're using mob mobile devices and cell phones. You're trying to access from a campus, from a remote office, anywhere in the world. End of the day, you're trying to access some specific services. So maybe those services are considered infrastructure as a service, as you can see it over here, or maybe they're considered software as a service. We're going to talk about those terminologies in depth later on. Or maybe you want to just access a private data center or a private cloud. You can see here there are some examples of very famous cloud providers such as Microsoft. They offer Microsoft Azure or Google with Google Cloud Platform and Amazon. They offer you AWS. There are lots of names over here. Salesforce, Dropbox, Microsoft 365, Oracle, I IBM, the name, oh, Cisco WebEx, the names are there, and the cloud is full of different offerings and different services, so how to create the cloud to be able to offer it to those different customers, this is what we need to do right here. <sighs> Time for the key points. So, again, cloud computing, what is it going to give us? It's going to give you the ability to rent your IT services, like what? Storage, networking, um, name it, operating system, application, any kind of IT service that you use to host at the data center or anywhere, you don't have to worry about owning those equipment anymore. You can actually rent those services and pay as you go. And let's not forget, the resources that we're talking about are actually grouped in pool that pool can be it should be elastic where it can be actually expanded or decreased according to my usage and it has to be measurable because i will be paying for those services so i need to see some kind of bill i'll be able to just see the resources from a self-service portal to be able to play with those resources and access the resources from anywhere in the world using any kind of network equipment and in the end hey this is going to give me some kind of an elastic pay-as-you-go model because, hey, I'm renting those resources. If you've gone that far, you know what you're going to do next. Hit the like button, share, and subscribe. And <laughs> you're watching. You're learning. Thank you and see you again in the next episode. Bye.